All right, guys, today we're gonna to be talking about graphing logarithmic functions. Um, and the graphs of logarithmic functions are not the most important graph of the year, but it is important to understand a couple of general things about the shape, and we're gonna wrap some important things up into it. So the parent functions of logarithmic parent functions are just uh, anything that is y equals log base something of x. So for instance, you know, f of x, equals log base seven of x, uh, y equals log of x, because what is the base here? And y equals natural log of x. These are all good things because they all just have a base of something. And hopefully we know what those bases are. All right, um, let's do an example of how these look. And we'll do it by first creating a table. Um, when x is, we're going to do f of x equals log base 3 of x. This is a parent function. And all parent functions will have some certain similar qualities. And we'll talk about what those are. Um, when x is negative 1, log base 3 of negative 1, so log base 3 of negative 1 is saying 3 to what power gives you a negative number. And the answer is this is undefined. It's undefined because you can't ever do log of a negative number. Um, there is no exponent you can put on 3 to get to negative 1. The same is true of 0. You can't do 3 to any power to get to 0. Don't get that confused with log base 3 of 1, which is 0. Um, there is no exponent you can put on 3 to get to 0. If you put the exponent 0 on 3, you'll get to 1. And we'll get to that in a second. In fact, let's skip over to that right now. Log base 3 of 1... Um, says 3 to what power gets you 1, and 3 to what power does get you 1. Well, that's 0. And in fact, this is going to be an important point of each parent function. All parent functions will have the point 1, 0 on them, because log base anything of 1 will always equal 0. So all log parent functions will have the point 1, 0 on them. Okay. Now, if you do transformations, then that point could move. But for the parent functions, uh, this is where that point will be. How about when x is 3? What is log base 3 of 3? And hopefully you recognize 3 to what power gives you 3. The answer is 1. And so this point is saying when x is 3, y is 1. So when x is 1, 2, 3, y is 1. Um... In fact, this is important enough that I'm going to put it up here also. Um, whenever x is whatever the base is, whenever x is whatever the base is, the y value will be 1, because log base a of a is one of our properties. a to the what power gives you a? a to the 1 power gets you a. Um, and so whatever the base is, um, you'll have a point at a comma 1. So when the base was 3, we have a point at 3 comma 1, right? Okay, what about 9? Log base 3 of 9. 3 to what power gets you 9? Well, hopefully we know that that's 3 squared. 3 squared gives you 9. So we go all the way over to 9 before we get up to 2. And in fact, I want you guys to think, what is the next easy x value we could do where we would get a y value? The next easy x value is all the way at 27. When x is 27, log base 3 of 27, 3 to what power gets you 27? Well, that'll be 3. And that's way off the graph. Um, hopefully you can see this is growing. It's increasing. And I'm going to write this right here. This is increasing. I should have given myself more room. But the direction of a log graph, a log parent functions, are always increasing. But it's growing more and more slowly. It's bending downwards. And so it's always concave down. All log graphs are increasing, but all log parent functions are increasing, but concave down. Um, let's look at some fractions. What's log base 3 of 1 third? Hopefully we can see the exponent we need on 3 to get to 1 third is negative 1. So when x is 1 third, that's just to the right of the x-axis. Y value is negative 1. When x is 1 ninth, which is even closer to the x-axis, log base 3 of 1 ninth, the uh, y value will be what? When x is 1 ninth, 3 to what power gets you 1 ninth, the y value will be negative 2. And so it may look like there's like not a lot of space between 1 ninth and 0, and there isn't. But in fact, 
we can fit in infinitely more fractions here. We could do 1 27th and 1 81st and 1 over 729. And the closer we get to the x-axis, the lower down the y-values will get because um, negative exponents will be needed to get to those fractions, and the smaller the fraction gets, the bigger the negative exponent will get. And so we'll, we end up with this um, interesting shape where there is an asymptote at x equals 0. Remember, log is undefined at x equals 0 and in all negative numbers. There won't be any values here. But as you get really close to 0, as you get to these fractions, you'll always end up with these negative uh, y values. And in fact, the closer you get to the x-axis, the lower down the y values will get. Um, so that leads us to our domain. What is the domain of this function? The domain here, hopefully you can see, is x is greater than 0, or sometimes we'll write 0 to infinity. Um, these are both good. Notice we used a parentheses because it doesn't include 0. We didn't use or equals to because there is no x value at 0. If you plug in 0, it's undefined. And what's the range? Well, we can see it keeps going down forever, and it keeps going up forever. Even though it's growing more and more slowly, the range is from negative infinity to infinity, or all real numbers. We can also say negative infinity less than x less than infinity. These are all fine. So the range keeps going up and down, but the domain only has x values that are greater than 0. That's kind of important for log functions. The last thing, we're going to wrap in something important here, um, which is a calculus concept or a pre-calculus concept that uh, starts becoming more and more important as we get to higher level math. And uh, we're going to start talking about it more and more as the year goes on here, and I, I think you'll talk about it more next year, and we will definitely talk about it a lot in calculus, which is limits. We talk about limits. Uh, we talked about it a little bit with E. Uh, remember, with the number E, we said that if you had, uh, if you got, if you did, if you broke it up into more and more components, we said that the limit of one plus one over n to the n power, if you broke up interest into more and more pieces, that limit as n went towards infinity, as n got bigger and bigger and bigger, that limiting value was E. Um, and, and this was how we discovered E, which was about 2.718, whatever. Um, this idea that as you get bigger and bigger with n, there could be a limiting value is important. And it almost looks like maybe there's going to be a limiting value with logarithms. It's bending down. Is it going to have a limiting value? The way we write this as, is we write the limit as x goes towards infinity. And what that means is this is as x goes towards infinity means as you go to the right more and more and more, will there be a limiting value of f of x? So the limiting value of f of x as x goes towards infinity, and it's important to know that for logarithms, there is no limiting value, that the limiting, that it just keeps going up and up towards infinity. So this statement here, the limit as x goes towards infinity of f of x equals infinity means as you go to the right more and more, the y values just keep going up and up and there is no limiting value, okay? That's one way we can use limits is to say that in this case, it just keeps going up and up and up. But I want to show you another way we can use limits. We use limits sometimes when there's a place where the graph breaks, like an asymptote um, where we can't say like at x equals zero, it's undefined, but we still might want to talk about what's happening when we get close to x equals zero. We're going to say the limit as x goes towards 0. Um, as x is going towards 0, uh, what's happening to the y value? So this means, is there a limiting value as x is getting closer to 0? As x is getting closer and closer and closer and closer to 0. So like as x is going closer and closer and closer, getting really close to 0, what's happening to the y value? Well, there's no limiting y value there. The limiting y value of f of x is negative infinity. All the y's go down and down and down. I want to compare this to something like y equals square root of x. Okay. Um, so y equals square root of x is also increasing and also concave down, but it doesn't have the asymptote at x equals 0. So I hope you remember what y equals square root of x looks like. And in this case, the limiting value of square root of x 
as x goes towards zero, as x gets closer and closer and closer to zero, the y value gets closer and closer and closer to zero. So, you know, there is a limiting value as you get close to zero here. Um, the, the limiting value is getting close to zero. And this becomes important when we start dealing with holes and some other weird things that can happen in graphs, which we aren't to yet. But I want you to at least start getting used to this limit notation because it becomes very important in high-level math. All right, let's do one more example. Let's see if you can fill out um, what are the points of natural log of x? Which of these points are correct? And hopefully you, you remembered that natural log of 1. Remember, natural log is log base e. So this is log base e of x. And so when x is 1, log base e of 1 is saying e to what power is 1? And that answer is 0. When, e, when x is e, it's saying log base e of e. e to what power gets you e? And that's 1. Log base e of e squared. So log base e of e squared is saying e to what power gets you e squared? And hopefully we can see that e to the second power will get you e to the second power. That's just a, a, almost a definition there. What about what exponent gets you e to 1 over e? Well, um, log base e of 1 over e is saying e to what power gets you 1 over e? And that's negative 1. And I'm going to put these on the graph. When x is 1, y is 0. That is the point that's going to be on all parent functions, right? When x is e, <clears throat> y is 1. And remember that e is about 2.7. That's, that's what you need to know, is that e is about 2.7. So when x is 1, 2.7, y is 1. And you're not expected to know e squared is 2. e squared is like, I don't know, 7 point something, but you don't even need to know that. Like, you just need to put this point on the graph, and from there you can graph it. Um, 1 over e is going to be somewhere between 0 and 1. And so you don't need to know exactly where. But you do need to be able to graph the shape of logarithmic functions. All logarithmic parent functions will have an asymptote at x equals 0. Um, and this is included here, right? Natural log of 0, e to what power it gets you 0 is undefined. So is negative 1. Natural log of negative 1. There's no power you can put on e to get to negative 1. And so that's undefined. And so this, too, will have an asymptote at x equals 0, is the asymptote. I don't need you to know exactly where e squared is. We should just know that, just like before, all log parent functions will have these things about them. They have a point at zero, at uh, one zero, sorry. When uh, the x value gets to the base, when the x value gets to e, the y value be, will be one. It's increasing but concave down, so you should draw yours bending downwards. As you go towards infinity, the y values keep growing and growing and growing, although this is the slowest growing function we've learned about so far. Um, and as x goes towards zero, the limit as x goes towards zero goes down to negative infinity. So it goes along that asymptote. Okay, so we do want to know these things about the log parent functions, okay? Why don't you try one on your own? Why don't you try log base 2 of x? Um, start by just, I'm just going to have you try to graph it on your own, and then check all the different things that are true about log base 2 of x. There's going to be a lot of them. Hopefully, we know there's going to be a point at 1, 0, and a point at 2, 1, because that's the base when x is 2, the base is 1. Then we're going to have some more points that we can do on this log. When x is 4, log base 2 of 4, 2 to what power gets you 4? 2 to the 2 power gets you 4, so log base 2 of 4 is 2. Um, we can also do 8, 8 fits on this graph. Um, log base 2 of 8, 2 to what power, so when x is 8, 2 to what power gets you 8? Well, that's 3, right? So we've got this point at 4, 2, and 8, 3. Kind of see what's going on here. Oh, man. Came up and cracking it. Um, and we also know it goes this way, right? We know that when x is 1 eighth, when x is 1 eighth, log base 2 of 1 eighth, what power goes on 2 to get you to 1 eighth? Well, that's negative 3. And so we can see that when x is really, really close to the x-axis, you know, the y value will become negative. And so, you know, as all parent functions, this graph is increasing, but concave down. 
it is bending downwards as it goes. We would have to take a pin and bend it like this. Um, it has an asymptote at x equals zero. Uh, it has a domain of all real numbers. Oh, uh, sorry, that's wrong. <laughs> has a domain of x is greater than zero. All the x's are to the right of zero. It has a range of all real numbers because it keeps going down and keeps going up. All real numbers. Um, the limit as x goes to zero of log base 2 of x. As x gets closer to zero, the y values go down to negative infinity. This is a, when we talk about this, we're saying, look, as x goes, this is about x's, as x goes towards zero, the y values go towards infinity. As x goes towards infinity, by the way, sometimes we'll write LIM instead of LIMIT. LIM is short for limit, and it's the standard abbreviation. Sometimes, sometimes we'll write LIM. Um, the limit as x is going towards infinity, so as the x goes towards the right, the y value is going towards infinity, right? So these two kind of go together. So hopefully we're feeling okay about our log graphs. Let's get into some transformations. What are the transformations in words of what's happening to the parent function? Obviously the parent function here is log base three of x. So what are the transformations? Well, inside of this, we see that it's adding by five. And so that is left by five. Outside of the log function, it's being subtracted by one and that's a translation down by one. So let's talk about how to graph this. Always start with the asymptote. We should know that on parent functions, the asymptote would be x equals zero, and this is gonna shift five to the left and one down. Um, and let's see how that looks. So there's an asymptote at x equals zero, and we're gonna shift it five to the left and one down. Shifting one down doesn't actually do anything because it's an infinite line. Um, but shifting it five to the left does. So one, two, three, four, five to the left. The new asymptote is gonna be at x equals negative five, right? So shifting left or right will change the asymptote. The other point we're gonna look at, the next point we're gonna look at after we shift the asymptote is we're gonna look at the point one, zero, and then the base, whatever the base here, the base was um, three. So what, what's the point that would have, what's the other important point besides one, zero that would have been on this asymptote, uh, that would have been on this graph? The other point is three comma one, right? Remember whatever the base, uh, whenever x gets to whatever the base is, uh, log base three of three will be one. And so we're gonna take these two points and we're going to um, shift them. So we're gonna take the point one, zero, and we're going to shift it five left and one down. So let's count one, two, three, four, five left and one down. You'll notice this will always be one away from the asymptote. So the point one zero will always end up being one away from the asymptote. Oh, sorry, one down. This was, I, I forgot I was counting by like twos here. This is one down. This point is slightly wrong. Um, the other point was at three, one. So let's look. One, two, three, one. And that point will shift one, two, three, four, five to the right and one down. So it'll be here. From here, guys, like you could shift more points, like you could take the point uh, nine, two and do that. But this is good enough for our purposes. If you follow the asymptote from here and you have it increasing but concave down, um, you'll, you'll, you'll be good enough to get full credit for what our purposes are. But you should know, like, hey, there is another point at 9, 2. So we could shift that 5 to the left. So 9 minus 5 will be 4. And 1 down, this will be 1. So there will be a point at 4, 1. You know, if we wanted to put that on, we could find it um, by shifting, you know, any other points, uh, 5 left and 1 down. Let's look at what happened here. We already talked about how it changed the asymptote. The asymptote is now at x equals negative five. That's gonna change the domain. The domain is now gonna be what? Well, the domain is all the x's that are greater than negative five, right? Because that's where the asymptote is. And to the left of that, that's where we're gonna have undefined values. 
You'll notice if you put in a number less than negative 5, you'll end up, end up with log of a negative, which is undefined. The range is still all real numbers. That doesn't change. The limits, the limit as x goes towards negative 5, as x goes towards negative 5, the y values go towards negative infinity, right? I'm just going to circle this to show you kind of how this limit splits off how we read it. As x goes towards negative 5, the y values go down to negative infinity. And as x's go towards infinity, the y values still go towards infinity. That's telling us that this keeps growing and growing and growing. So those are the two limits that we should have there. It's still concave down, still bending downwards, and it's still increasing. All right, let's do one last example for the day, and this will be a tricky one, and then we'll stop. y equals negative natural log of e to the fourth times x. Now, I see this negative out front. What is that going to do? What kind of transformation is that going to do? Well, this is going to be a reflection across the x-axis, but this isn't the parent function right now. This is e to the fourth x. We could try to do something weird with a horizontal compression, but that seems really hard, like really hard to graph. Instead, let's use our properties of logarithms and realize that this is two things multiplying. This is e to the fourth times x. When we have two things multiplying, we're allowed to do what? We can split that into two separate logs that are adding. Now, we have to be careful here because natural log of e to the fourth x is going to be natural log of e to the fourth plus natural log of x. This is a binomial. This negative is for this whole thing. And so when this becomes a binomial, that negative is going to distribute. This is going to be negative natural log of e to the fourth plus natural log of x. But we need that negative to go around the outside because that negative needs to distribute. This is going to be y equals negative natural log of e to the fourth. Oh, sorry, I almost wrote it wrong there minus natural log of x. That minus needs to go to both of these because when we used our properties of logarithms, this became a binomial. Anything separated by adding or subtracting has distributing involved when multiplying is involved. So let's see how we can simplify this. Well, we can do natural log of e to the fourth. This is saying e to what power gets us e to the fourth? The answer is just four. So this is negative four minus natural log of x. And this negative four, it's easier to think of as um, at the end of it. So negative natural log of x minus four. This is really just a shift down, but it's easier to think about it if we rewrite it at the beginning. So look what we have here. We have some transformations. We have a reflection across the x-axis. Remember, if the negative was on the inside, it would be a reflection across the y-axis. And it shifted down by four. Let's go through our process here. Um, we want to start with the asymptote. The asymptote is at x equals zero. It gets shifted down by four. Does that change the asymptote? No, it's still an infinite line at x equals zero. What about when we reflect it across the x-axis? Well, reflecting it across the x-axis is still exactly where it is. And so none of these transformations changed where the asymptote was. Next, we want to change the points that would be part of this. On the parent function, the parent function is y equals natural log of x. We would have had what two important points? One zero, and the base of this is e, and that'll be e comma one. Um, and again, we should know about how big e is. E is about 2.7. So these are the points we are going to change. Um, so let's do it. Let's do the transformations. Let's take the point one zero, and it's going to get uh, reflected across the x-axis. Well, this is on the x-axis, so when you try to reflect it, it doesn't move. Um, zero, negative of zero is still zero. And then we need to shift it down by four. So one, two, three, four. There will be a point at one, negative four, because this point at one, zero got reflected, which didn't do anything, and then shifted down by four. Okay, let's look at the next point. E comma one. E is at about 2.7 comma one. This is where it would be on the parent function. Um, but it's going to get reflected, and now reflecting it does do something. Instead of being at positive one, it'll be at y equals negative one. So reflecting it goes down to here, reflects across the x-axis, and then it'll shift down by one, two, three, four. And you will notice that because 
it got shifted down, it changes the shape of the graph. If we just follow the asymptote now, we can see that this function is now decreasing and concave up, right? Like the function is now bending up. It doesn't change anything else. It doesn't change the domain or the range or the asymptote. Uh, it doesn't change the limit. Oh, it does change the, one of the limits. It does change both of the limits. The limit as x goes towards zero of, uh, I'm going to call it y. The y value is going towards what? As x goes towards zero, now the y value is going towards positive infinity. The y values are going up. Before, as x went towards zero, the asymptote, the y values were going to negative infinity, it means they keep going down. But when you reflect it, now the y values are all going up. Uh, and the limit as x goes towards infinity, as x keeps going right and right and right, the y values are now going down to negative infinity. So that's a little bit different. So as we go right and right and right, the y values are going down. So hopefully we can see that difference. And that's it. That's all we're doing on log um, graphing. I hope you have a good rest of your day.